Hi, this is Jared Younger. I'm director of the Neuroinflammation Pain and Fatigue Laboratory here at UAB. And this is continuing our series of short videos about the laboratory and the projects we're running. So today I want to talk about our trial of low-dose dextromethorphan for fibromyalgia. This is a, a compound that I think can work similarly to low-dose naltrexone, which is a drug that we also use in fibromyalgia. But uh, dextromethorphan hits those uh, immune system cells in the brain in a different way than naltrexone does. And so I think low-dose dextromethorphan may help in fibromyalgia patients who don't respond to naltrexone or for those people who can't take naltrexone for some reason. So let's talk about dextromethorphan and our test of it in fibromyalgia. But first, I want to make sure that everyone is thinking about the same compound because there are other drugs that start with dextro that do completely different things. So you may have heard me talk about dextro-naltrexone. That is a different drug. You may have been exposed to dextroamphetamine, which is a stimulant, and that's a completely different drug as well. So um, the dextro part doesn't tell you what the drug is. That's simply a chemical term that gives some information about the um, particulars of the molecular structure of the compound. So this is dextromethorphan. You may have run across this drug. In fact, you probably have because it's in a lot of uh, over-the-counter cough medications. It suppresses the cough reflex, but it really depends on the dosage. It's also used um, with quinidine for some symptoms of Alzheimer's and a few other conditions, but that dosage is really the critical thing. So if you are taking it at 200 milligrams or higher, that is a dissociative dose. And so dextromethorphan at that dosage blocks and um, kind of changes sensory information that's being communicated throughout the body and brain. And that can suppress pain, but it also can make it difficult for you to control your body. And if the dosage gets too high, your brain can start to create hallucinations. And so that's not the dosage we're talking about. It, it might help pain, but it can also interfere with your day-to-day -day activities. At kind of the moderate dose, around 20, 30, 40 milligrams per dosing, that's the antitussive or anti-cough dosage. And so that's an effective drug for suppressing cough. So that's why you see it in a lot of over-the-counter medications. So we're going even below that at 10 milligrams per dosing, once in the morning and once at night. At the 10 milligram dosage, we think that there's basically no nervous system activity whatsoever, no dissociative effects, uh, no side effects like that, probably won't even be effective at suppressing cough, um, but we believe that it's suppressing the microglia cells, which are the cells you've probably heard me talk about before that we think are um, activated abnormally and causing the symptoms of fibromyalgia. So we hope that dextromethorphan can take those abnormally activated cells and get them back into their resting state where they're supposed to be so they're not producing those chemicals that make you feel sick. As an example of what I'm talking about, uh, this is a 2015 paper uh, that was run by a number of uh, researchers in China and they looked at the effects of dextromethorphan on microglia cells. You can see three columns here. The first column is what the cells look like when they're not activated, so when they're normal. The middle column is what they look like when they've been activated with lipopolysaccharide, which basically tricks them into thinking that there's a severe infection. And then the last column is what happens when you then treat the cells with dextromethorphan. And we don't have time to go through each of the rows and what they mean, but I just want to kind of highlight one, which is the one that's INOS or INOS. That is an enzyme that creates nitric oxide. And when microglia cells produce a lot of nitric oxide, that uh, causes inflammation and it can also degrade the quality of the blood brain barrier. And when you have that, you can have immune cells and other things infiltrate the brain and cause some problems. So this is a, an example of what we hope is happening in people with fibromyalgia. We hope they're taking the dextromethorphan and it will reduce the inflammatory activity of the microglia and therefore reduce the pain and other symptoms of fibromyalgia by, by targeting the central immune system. So that's the basic idea. This is a pilot trial. It's a small trial. We're only going to be running 15 people. We're starting this in July of 2018. So if you're seeing this video as we're putting it out, we'll be recruiting over the next few months. 
and then we hope to have this trial finished by the end of 2018. That's our target. If we can enroll people fast enough, uh, we'll, we'll finish it this year. It's not a safety trial, really, because uh, dextromethorphan has been used so much uh, over the counter that there's very little chance of severe side effects. This is more of an efficacy trial. We don't know if it's going to help people with fibromyalgia. I have reasons to think it will, but we have to do the trial first to find out. It's never been tested in this way. So we will know by the end of the trial. Basically, people enroll in the trial if they have fibromyalgia, and we screen them for that. And then they will take capsules for a few months. They'll probably get placebo for some of that time, and they'll probably get dextromethorphan for some of that time, but they won't know when. So it's placebo controlled. And what that allows us to do is when they track their symptoms every single day, we can then analyze those data and see if when they started or stopped taking dextromethorphan, there was a change in their symptoms. And so when we finish this small trial, if we see something interesting, if it looks like it was pushing the symptoms down when they were taking the drug, that tells us we should probably do follow-up studies and maybe change the dosage and try a range to see what the most effective dosage is. Um, that's the basic idea. It's to, to try to do a quick trial and a fast trial just to tell us is this a line of research that needs more resources or should we just give up and go to the next drug? Uh, I did pick this drug for a few different reasons. There are a lot of drugs I want to test. We don't have the resources to do them all. I wanted to do dextromethorphan because I know it, it has the effects on microglia that I, that I believe are important in suppressing microglia or suppressing fibromyalgia. Uh, another reason is it's been used for so long that we know it's safe in most people, and that's always good. It's not an experimental drug. And the third reason is it's something that could be used now if it works. And so we do try to work with drugs that are developed specifically to target microglia, but those can take years and years to get to the point where they can be used in humans, and especially to the point where they can be prescribed. So while we're doing that, we also wanna test drugs that can be used right now. So if we find something interesting, that information can be given to clinicians and they may prescribe this dosage of dextromethorphan for people with fibromyalgia. So that's the clinical trial. Um, again, we're recruiting and if people are uh, close enough to the Birmingham, Alabama region that they could come to UAB about once a month for the, for the checkups, you may be eligible for the trial. So I'll put some information at the bottom of this video in the description that's got the links where interested people can go and find out more about the study or do a screening to see if they might be eligible. There's a lot of things we screen out for, but um, you know anybody who's interested, there's no harm in at least uh, going through the screening and seeing if you meet the criteria for that study. So we will try to do this as fast as we can. It's completely dictated by how quickly we can get 15 people to agree to do the study and hopefully stay in the study. And as soon as we have the trial finished, we'll do the analyses, and I hope to get the results of that study out to everyone soon. So that's it for this trial. I'll surely be talking more about it later, but in the meantime, I'll be putting out some more videos about our many other studies that we're running right now and try to catch everyone up on um, all the things we're doing. So thank you, and we'll talk to you later.